my goodness. And there it is. Wow, get the tip to go. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Bowl TV. It is time for the pregame show prior to the step ladder finals of the 2021 PWBA Lincoln Open taking place at Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska. My name is Aaron Smith. We're going to bring in our Hall of Fame broadcast crew in just a second. Uh, quick rundown of our top four. Uh, top seed, Kelly Kulik, looking for her seventh career PWBA Tour title. The number two seed, Gigi Mason, looking to win her first career national title. She has a couple of regional titles. Shannon Pluhowski looking for her first win since the 2006 Queens on tour. And then Liz Johnson, a day away from her birthday, looking for title number 25. Uh, we are getting underway. If you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, just a reminder, once we get to the Step Ladder Finals, you got to head over to BowlTV.com to watch. So head over there now if you want to check it out, uh, pick up a subscription, watch the Step Ladder Finals from the Lincoln Open. Uh, but folks... Since we got a couple of minutes before it's game time here, we're going to bring in our first guest who's going to uh, uh, break things down for us throughout the course of this uh, excellent tournament here and the stepladder finals. So let's welcome her in, Hall of Famer, CDB herself, Carolyn Doran Baller. Carolyn, well, welcome. How are you, Aaron? I'm doing great. I'm excited. This is a phenomenal I'm, Final Four uh, here in Lincoln. Too. I'm, I'm, I'm actually very excited, and it was a very exciting finish because – there were several girls that, based on what they bowled, they could sneak right into the third or fourth position. So I don't know if everybody watched position round, but it was just as good as a TV show. And I think we have, you know what, this show is full of um, veterans and the newcomer who doesn't bowl like she's a newcomer. So we're going to see some great things out of these four ladies. We certainly are. And uh, someone in the Bull TV chat even mentioned this is a, a collegiate matchup. We talk so much about mm -hmm. the connection to the University of Nebraska and Pluhowski and Gigi uh, Cornhuskers. But for Kelly and Liz, both went to Moorhead State. So there we go. Uh, two colleges represented. So that's going to be uh, fun to run down as well. Uh, we're going to bring in Mike Flanagan from Inside Bowling to join us. He is live on site. Hello, Michael. Hello. Great to see you guys here tonight. Uh, you're right. It's two Huskers against two Hall of Famers here. And mm -hmm. I, I got a cu couple of little stats to throw out for you here. This week. To cash in this tournament this week with 65 players, the top 32 cashed. It took a 2 0, just slightly short of a 2 0 3 average. And tonight, to make the stepladder finals, low scoring, Liz Johnson averaged 216.79 for 24 games of qualifying. Number three seed, Shannon Polhowski, averaged 218.17. Gigi Mason making her first televised appearance here tonight, 218.79. And Kelly Kulik, our top seed, was plus 581, 130 pins better than anybody else in the field. Average 224.21 going into tonight's show. Excellent. I like those Excellent. stats. Those are th that cash stat right there uh, for the top 32. I think a two, 203 average. Uh, look, I don't think the patterns are very easy out on the women's tour. Quite different looking at 2021 compared to 2019, 18, 17. But I like the lower cash. I think that uh, brings in a lot of different games into play, brings in spare shooting. But then for the top four, you always have the cream rise to the top. So those four or eight players always usually do separate themselves. So I think those stats are fantastic. All right, we are going to go ahead and um, bring on the lanes as well so we can uh, see our competitors as they get ready. Lanes 23 and 24, the TV pair this week. And uh, once again, all the folks on BowlTV.com, they already know it. Uh, it's a great bowling community. Uh, we got some giveaways coming up, so we're going to be giving away three bowling balls from our gold industry partners throughout the course of this broadcast. One from Brunswick, one from Storm, and one from Rotogrip. The only place you can do that, folks, is on BowlTV.com. So if you want to have a chance to take home a free high-performance bowling ball from one of those three companies, 
BoldTV.com. Sign up now. Subscribe. You got a couple minutes before we get going. Uh, so this opening matchup, Liz Johnson on the right side, Shannon Pluhowski on the left. Uh, for Shannon, she has been the lone lefty uh, since we started competition this morning. She was the only one uh, to make it to the top 32, uh, a place she is very familiar with from her time as a Cornhusker, first as a player and now as an assistant coach. They're fresh off an NCAA title. Um uh, how much of an advantage uh, is the left-handed, right-handed thing this particular week uh, with kind of how it's broken down on this 46-foot pattern? I, th I think it's an advantage, and I think this is something that Shannon has is very familiar with and has never shied away from. Uh, I've bowled with Shannon many years where she is the only lefty on her pair, not following any left-handers. So she has, has truly learned to adapt to her environment. The other thing is, let's face it, urethane has come back into play, and Shannon is no stranger to urethane. As a matter of fact, according to Chuck, she is looking to use urethane at the start of this match, which allows her to play the lanes a little more the way she wants to and will keep her in the pocket consistently. If she feels her carry is not what it needs to be to win this match, she will change. She is quick. Yeah, I got a little something here for you guys. Lanes 23 and 24. Our folks in the chat have even just pointed it out. This is the same pair that Belmo won the U.S. Open the last time the U.S. Open was here. And also, just to let you know, I've been watching the ladies practice a little bit. You're right, CDB. You don't see a lot of urethane on the left side of the lane on the PWBA Tour. But Shannon is going to be using urethane. And I'm seeing Liz start a little bit further to the right than where mm -hmm. she started. Uh, throughout the rest of the qualifying round. She's got a good look from out that I've seen so far in practice. We'll see if she jumps into the track or not. Mike, you got to run down on time for us before it's uh, time to get going here? Two minutes. They got the clock up there. It's about two minutes and 15 seconds. Okay. All right, folks. That means if you're watching on Facebook and YouTube, that's uh, that's how much time we got left. We'll take a quick refresh, and then it's going to be time to head over to BullTV.com. If you're already there, you're all you are already all set to go. Uh, so, of course, you know, Kelly Kulik coming back third place in her first uh, in her first event back last week, the top seed this week. Uh, what a phenomenal run from Kelly uh, after, you know, kind of a questionable two, 2020. She had a rough 2019. We weren't sure uh, how much we were going to see her. Obviously, the season got canceled. She's back and uh, she's looked as good as ever. She she used that time wisely, and, and it is so apparent in the way she's bowling. She really took a good look at herself, her game, and her future. And she made some decisions during the pandemic and said, I still love to compete, and it's still, it's still truly what I want to do. So she had to make the changes. One of the things I mentioned last week, she is truly more aggressive to the line. She is using her legs more, which is allowing her – to get the ball out onto the lane she a little bit more than she did in 2019 and previous years. That has allowed her ball to conserve energy, and that's why she feels things have definitely taken a turn where she feels her carry is better. And once your carry is better and you see those pins fall, your confidence gets better also. Yeah, the other nugget I have is we have about 45 seconds left here is I like to look at championship round appearances. And this is this is Liz Johnson's second championship round appearance. This is now Kelly's second championship round appearance. Back to back weeks for Kelly. Of course, Liz made a show the very first show of the season. This is event number five. 20 titles up for grabs on the PWBA tour this season. Two championship round appearances. Aaron McCarthy and Dasha coming into this event each had three. Dasha made the top 12. Aaron McCarthy did not. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead. We're going to have a quick refresh here because it's time to get going. If you're on Facebook and YouTube, this is the time. Head over to BullTV.com because we're shutting it off. But uh, we appreciate everyone from joining us. We got a couple of giveaways, and we're going to award a champion here in just a couple of couple of minutes, a couple of hours uh, here at the PWBA Lincoln Open. So uh, when we come back, we will be looking at game number one of the Stepladder Finals, Shannon Pluhowski versus Liz Johnson. All right, folks, we'll be back soon.
All right, and just like that, hello again, everybody on Bull TV. We appreciate you joining us here. It is time. We are kicking things off for the stepladder finals here at the 2021 PWBA Lincoln Open. Liz Johnson going to lead things off, the 24-time titleist. Made the show here in 2019, finished third. Starts things off with a strike. Great come out shot by Liz. Liz said she was going to try to play a little further right. Actually, when I talked to some of the girls, I was asking, you know, what was your strength? What was your weakness? You know, I hate to use the word weakness, but sometimes, you know, there's something that just doesn't work. And one of the keys to her was, I think I stayed further right longer than I should have been. But of course, remember, this is a fresh pair, so things are different. Excellent lane level look there. Shannon rings the seven pin, and that uh, that did not look like your thing going down the lane. Well, we will just have to ask her ball rep, Chuck Gardner, what ball that is going down the lane, won't we? <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to see. And how cool it is cool is it here at uh, Sun Valley Lanes? We got the uh, essentially the bumpers, the, the the whole scoring system is worked into the lights and you can see it actually trace with the ball as the competitors throw it here in the stepladder finals. They did that in 2019 as well. Just another great touch uh, from John Lucido and company at Sun Valley Lanes. So Chuck says last minute change. She changed to a reactive ball and she does have the right lane tighter. So she's playing much straighter on that line. Uh, I'm sorry, on that lane. She feels like she really needs to keep her angles in front of her. Looks to be the blue paradox. So actually uh, kind of a throwback, a ball a couple of years old, uh, but something we've seen Shannon have success with in the past here on tour. Seeing if I can get her that first win since 2006 at the USBC Queens. That right, there is, that right there is a classic shot of Liz Johnson, keeping the ball in front of her more right to left, using her legs, which allows her to get low, and the ball gets off her hands so smooth. She said her key tonight was, I got to make sure that my push away and my timing is on point. I've got to use my legs. I can't pop up. And sometimes what she says is, when she doesn't see her ball hook the way she wants it to or the motion she she wants to see, she tries to help it. So as long as she uses her legs and the push and the timing feels smooth, she feels like she's right on point. Early three-bagger for the 24-time PWBA Tour Titleist. Looking for her first win since the 2018 season, 2019 was her first year locked out since the relaunch of the tour, unable to come away with a victory. Of course, she was the top seed at the PWBA Louisville Open, but uh, unfortunately ran into Dasha Kovalova in a 300 game in the title match. Three great shots by Shannon. That was a good shot of her when she was setting up on that right lane. Next time she gets up on the right lane, I want everyone to notice how far left Shannon is actually standing. She's almost right next to the ball return. So, you know, when you hear people going, oh, I can't get that far left, you know, as a left-hander, she is almost up against that ball return, walking as straight as she can, and that swing is just, just dropping from her shoulder, and she's able to play very straight lines. Oh, oh, messenger doesn't scoot across. Four very aggressive shots off of Shannon. I like her swing. You know, she's worked very hard on making sure that she doesn't grab it at the top. Uh, for quite some time, Shannon would lag 
the top of her backswing just a little bit and then pull down on it. And she is so much smoother now. And also there's no bend in her elbow. Every now and then when she gets a little off, she has a little bend in her elbow. She spent a lot of time, especially over the last two weeks, truly working on her game. And you can see it because I'm going to tell you, your swing is not straight. You can't play that direct. Pair of seven pins, the only thing we've seen so far. Otherwise, all strikes up on the boards for Liz Johnson and Shannon Pluhowski. Liz looking to make it four in a row to kick things off. That looks really, really tough to beat, Carolyn. Well, right now, as you know, Liz is a robot. Again, she's allowed to play the lanes the way she wants. She's further right. She likes to shut down her angles. And what she will do from where she's at right now, what she did the last two days, is she'll make those parallel moves, two and one, two and two, unless she sees a bigger breakdown. But with only you know, three girls bowling on the right side, the breakdown shouldn't be that much. If she's able to play this game, she's going to be very tough to beat. Yeah, it looks like she almost got away with that one there. That one looked uh, looked like it might not make the turn. Right, right there. Do you see how she pops up just a little bit with her upper body? We just talked about that. Got a little bit further right, didn't quite catch it, but she got the light mixer. She's also using a ball of parallel parallax effect that allows her to even out the lane. Uh oh. You can see when Shannon let that one go, she wasn't very happy. A little bit too quick. Didn't quite catch that one at the bottom, but she got a break, left an easy spare. CDB, when you hit this point halfway through the game, you've made four really good shots. That one was, as we said, got a little left, but uh, your opponent has the front five. What's, uh, what's going through Shannon's head right now? Well, at this point, and of course, don't forget, you're also bowling Liz Johnson, who doesn't make very many mistakes. Um, I, I would be at this point saying, okay, do I change balls or do I change my angle or ball speed? Something to change it up just enough to kick those corners out. Um, because ring seven and, you know, light hits like that are not going to beat Liz Johnson. Thanks to JT for the second look here in slow motion. Yep. Great Excellent shot. shot. Yeah, great shot by Shannon. Looks like she really got that one into the lane just a little bit sooner. Put all that one. Great reaction. She's thrown it good. Um, I talked to her a little bit at the NCAA finals. You know, she, she wasn't bowling as much as she wanted because she was coaching, but she looks good out there. She did miss the kickoff classic series due to her coaching responsibilities at Nebraska. First event last week and looking to make a run here and seven pin is going to stop the run. Another good shot. Got it slightly right, a little more right to left, where if you saw those good shots that one high flush, they were more right to left. But still, Liz is, Liz is going to hit the pocket. She is going to keep the ball in the 1-3. So it's, it's a matter of just tweaking what Liz likes to do to figure out how to get 10 in the pit. So get ready for the seventh frame here, folks. We are going to have our first bowling ball giveaway, a Brunswick knockout will be available to one lucky Bowl TV viewer. Uh, after Liz's shot here, we will uh, prompt it. You'll see a countdown. If you're in full screen, please take it out for a quick second so you can see the chat. Uh, you'll see another prompt to say the giveaway has begun. Find that submit entry button, click it. You'll have a chance to win here on Bowl TV.
That's the shot. Straight up in front of her, right to left, high flush. And you know what? You could hear Liz say, push, which means she knows she got it just probably a little left of target because she's trying to play so straight. But her ball speed allows her to create hole doing that. Eighth frame, Pluhowski, max of 257 out there and needed that hit. Wow. The that tumble. One, she, she was a little shaky on that one herself. When she let it go, you could see her reaction. Got it just a little further left and definitely was not as clean out of that ball as she was the last two shots, but got the light mixer. We have a match here. This match is not over. Max score for Liz Johnson, 279. But as you said, one hit will drop her into the 250s as well. Seven pin last time here on 24. No seven pin that time. No seven pin that time. And honestly, if you were to look right here, does this not look like the first four shots she threw of the game? I mean, rock solid again. She knows what her strengths are and she takes advantage of it. Both, first of all, you don't meet the top four or the top 32 unless you can repeat your shots. When you get to the top four and you're making TV shows and you're winning 20 titles, you have to be able to repeat and feel what you need to do to increase your carry. Ninth frame, is that gonna get up the hill? Eight pin left standing. Ball game. We got one. Gets this one out to about six, seven. Doesn't quite get back, but leaves the light eight. With the spare, the scenario becomes very simple. Max score for Liz Johnson, 258, and she converts it no problem. Shannon Pluhowski with four more strikes, 257. Big congratulations to Pat for winning the Brunswick knockout. And big thank you to Brunswick, one of our gold partners here on the PWBA tour. We got two additional bowling ball giveaways coming up this broadcast, folks. Congratulations, Pat. Our marketing team will be reaching out to you later this week. Ninth frame to keep the pressure on. Tad Light leaves the 6-9. She got that way out. She was going more up about, I'd say, 3-4. She got that one out to 1-2, and it just didn't quite get there. It didn't look like she act, it really caught it at the end like she had been. That was a key shot there. And the chop all but wraps it up. Max score now 223. Liz will just need a couple pins on her first shot. She's going to be moving on to the semifinal match. GG Mason awaiting her opportunity for her first championship round appearance and first chance at a national tour title after winning two regionals 2019 and 2020. Great week, though, for Shannon Pluhowski. She's going to wrap up in fourth place here. Great week. Her game looks solid. Just got a little quick on that right lane where sent it out just a little too far. But again, I think the changes, the things she's been working on are definitely putting her in the direction that she wants to go. Um, she really has been working more on making her push just a little bit longer, which she feels allows her swing 
to fall more naturally. And I think that's really what helped her this week. She's going to finish with two 23 with all three in the 10th. Just uh, three pins here on the first shot for Liz Johnson to officially advance. Gigi Mason awaiting in the step ladder or in the semifinals, excuse me. And then Kelly Kulik, the top seed here at the PWBA Lincoln Open, Sun Valley Lanes, Lincoln, Nebraska. That's a winner, folks. Liz Johnson, Gigi Mason coming up next here on Bull TV. Liz is going to try something different here on the fill ball, but uh, we're going to bring in Shannon Pluhowski to the broadcast here after her fourth place finish at the Lincoln Open. Shannon, welcome to the show. Great, great performance this week. Thank you. Hi, Shannon P. How are you? Hi, CDB. Okay, so I think you look great out there. I know you didn't have the outcome you wanted. Uh, I know you've made some changes in your game. I talked about them a little bit, especially about your push. How did you feel it all came together this week? I mean, I... I went to work Sunday and Monday and really didn't throw a full shot until Tuesday. I just had to go back to the basics and start over. And I think, you know, in four days I made pretty good progress. I think you look great. I, I think you, no, I think you look a lot more smooth. I do think your swing is a lot longer. And, and I know we've talked in the past a little bit about when you fell off, you used to get that little bend in your elbow and everything just looks like it's it's really smooth. Uh, that right lane seemed to give you a little bit uh, of a problem. You missed a little left. Uh, was that a little bit of your tempo? It looked like you got a little quick. A little of both. I couldn't get far enough left because of the ball return. So I needed to roll it a little better and a little fast. And then not being able to get far enough left made it go a little light. One of the things I want you to talk about is, um, in, in when I was texting with you, you do use urethane. And I told everyone out there that you are not afraid to use urethane. You're also not afraid to be the only lefty on your pair and the only lefty to go to another pair that hasn't had a left-hander on it. Um, what does urethane do for you? And how have you mentally adjusted yourself to know that you may be the only left-hander pair to pair? Unfortunately, on tour, there hasn't been many lefties. So kind of since tour came back, that's kind of been the what's happened. So I don't let it bother me anymore. Um, just try to do the best I can. Uh, I'm not afraid of urethane anymore. It allows me to keep my angles pretty closed and keep it in front of me, which is one of my A games. So I didn't like urethane this week early, and then it saved me this morning. Uh, and I, I threw it a little bit this afternoon to, to get to the show, and I decided to go with the Paradox tonight. Awesome. Okay, so now the big question. You've won an NCAA championship as a player, and you have won an NCAA championship as an assistant coach. Which is easier? <laughs> Probably as a player, because you have ball in hand. Uh, but the girls bowled great. They were calm on TV, and I tried to use how I helped them to help myself tonight. I was just going to say to you, what do you take away from coaching that you use when you're out there on the lanes? It's pretty much like talking to yourself in a nicer way. So just learn to, to be nicer to myself and it's okay to have bad games and bad shots. Excellent. Well, you look great out there, Shannon. I look forward to seeing you. Best of luck this season. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. All right, we have a Kelly. And Gigi getting some warm up here on lanes 23 and 24. We're going to go back to full screen for everybody. And in a couple of minutes, the semifinal match, Liz Johnson against Jasmine G. G. Mason. Coming up next here, Kelly Kulik awaits the winner. Carolyn, for Gigi, she's had success on every level. She's had success at the regional level. She knows what these stepladder finals feel like. But how different is this going to be for her knowing this is for a national title? Uh, on the PWBA tour. 
there's a couple of things that I think are going through her mind. You know, we were, we've all been there. Anyone who's won a national title, you, you know, you had to start somewhere. Right. Um, and I think it's stepping stones and I think she's done it the right way. She's had success at the amateur level, team USA collegiately. She's won regional titles. And now this is the next big stage. I think she'll, she'll reflect back onto to what she did in those regional events to make her successful. But I will say, I do think the nerves are, are just a little bit different when you're actually bowling for that national title. All right, the, the lanes have gone red, so I believe that means practice is all but wrapped up. So uh, Gigi will have lane choice of who starts the match. And uh, as we get into this match, uh, our second bowling ball giveaway is going to be coming up here, uh, courtesy of Roto Grip. Uh, so similar to how the first one worked for the Brunswick knockout, uh, you're going to see the prompt in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Uh, you just wait for the submit entry button to pop up. If you're in full screen, please take it out for a quick second uh, to see the chat and everything. Uh, it'll be one countdown, about 60 seconds, then the second one with the submit entry button. 45 seconds for your chance to win a Roto Grip bowling ball of your choice. So, uh, CDB, I'll pose it to you. What would be a great Roto Grip ball out there for uh, for anyone taking to their league or their next tournament? Well, I think last week I was talking about our RST one, which I absolutely love. But I think I'm going to go with the second one. I truly like that works very well off of that is your UC two pearl cover, a little cleaner, a little more hook on the back. Recommendation from CDB and the strike to kick off the semifinal from GG giveaway is going, folks. Good luck, everybody. And right here, you're looking at the UC2 in action out of GG's hand. And again, we talked about this last week. Light hit looked very aggressive. As I always say, those light hits, when you start carrying those, the lane will eventually come to you as the lane changes every shot. Now, the one question I have on this line that Liz is playing, do you think this is going to be able to hold up for two more games if she's able to get through this match, or how much do you think she is going to have to move uh, once she starts seeing potentially uh, – that one looked like it began to read a little bit earlier uh, once she it sees did. a four pin? It did, definitely. But as you could see, because of her ball speed, it, it rolled and it almost set. Okay, That's what Liz likes to say. With Liz's ball speed and the angle she plays – she's going to be able to make those parallel moves because she's not going to see a lot of breakdown. Like I said, maybe that two and two, three and two, everything just to keep it still parallel in front of her because what is one of Liz's greatest assets? And you're looking at it right here. She can keep the ball in front of her and her ball speed is fantastic. Early double from Liz. Gigi looking to match here. How tough is it to have to go up against a living legend like Liz Johnson in your opening match on, on the national tour here? Well, I've done it plenty of times, and she shot 300 at me on TV. So I, anytime you go against a Liz Johnson, it's it's tough. Any Anytime you go against any of these women, it's tough because the talent level – has increased because of everything they're learning at that collegiate level. Gigi here, this right lane, I believe, is hooking just a little more, but she definitely didn't get that ball as far right as she did on the left lane. So let's see what she does here on the left lane to compensate for that light hit. To me, I wouldn't move. Delivers, take, takes advantage of the Brooklyn in the second, three in a row. Gigi did bowl the only 300 games so far this week at the Lincoln Open. And, folks, if uh, if we do happen to have a couple of strings of strikes going here and get exciting at the end, there is a $10,000 bonus for a 300 game in the step ladder, courtesy of Go Bowling. And there's a bonus to Aaron and I for watching it just because we're here. <laughs> that is, yes, of course. That is uh... a. 
the, the one thing that you will watch out of Liz Johnson and to Kelly Kulik, I mean, if we really, I wish we had track a tracker on here because it it's absolutely amazing watching Liz throw the ball, how accurate she really is. But she never wavers from the game plan. She never wavers that someone has th a three bagger at her or a four bagger. Neither does Shannon Pulowski. If you watch these bowlers, do they ever really look nervous? And especially with 24 titles, I mean, this is second nature to her, third nature, fourth nature, actually. Wow. Okay, I get some hits along the way, way, too. Yeah, I got that one way left. And you could see her lower body move a little bit. Not as steady at the end. It's the trip four, got a break. I think that was a bad shot by Liz. So, again, that's where you come back and you say to yourself, that wasn't that great of a shot. Do I move, though, because I don't have as much hold? And to me, I think you're going to see Liz move at least the board. After the Brooklyn on lane 24 in the second frame, through the nose, 3-6. You can see right here that that ball does not get right of about 18. I, I, I'm trying to look camera angle here. Um, she's getting that ball on the left lane a little further right, but according to what I'm being told, this right lane does hook up just a little bit sooner. So Gigi, with the way she likes to play the lanes, is probably going to make that bigger jump to the left to try to get her ball a little bit cleaner through the front. Covers the spare, clean through four. Gigi, a national champion for the Nebraska Cornhuskers in 2015 at the 2016 World Bowling Youth Championships. Took home a couple of gold medals for Junior Team USA right here in this building. Isn't everybody who bowled for Nebraska in, uh, a champion? It's, <laughs> it's such a strong powerhouse college team. <laughs> Six NCAA titles in 17 seasons. She's got this left lane locked down. She seems so much cleaner through it. Look at how far down the lane this one gets. This one gets out to at least almost nine. Definitely opening her angles a little more on the left lane. So with this right lane hooking just a little more in the front, the middle for her, it's time for her to make the big move. Looking for five in a row, gets it. I'm just, this is my standard answer. Great shot by Liz. <laughs> Great shot by Liz. She got that one just a little bit. I mean, that one just a little bit. She's been going up around 10, 11, 9, 10. I mean, that one looks like it got out to about eight, which tells me she actually has a little bit of area. But again, if this lane is, if the right lane is fucking a little more for Gigi, it could be starting to pick up just a little bit for Liz. She tripped the four on this last shot, but again, I thought she got the ball a little left of target. It wasn't a clean shot. Let's see if she moves. Stays down on that one and 10 back. Did not look like she moved on the lane, just made sure she kept up her ball speed, and you are correct. Right there, smooth off the hand, great projection. That right there is the Liz Johnson Hall of Fame right to left look that she likes to see. That's tough to beat. Again, I said that the first match, and it got close, but it's time for Gigi to make the move on this left lane, and let's see what she can do. Liz started with the front five in game one, front six now here in the semifinal. She definitely projected that ball here, you see. He gets that out to about eight, a little bit further right on, than on that left lane. Ball didn't quite recover. 
But again, I do think she had to make a move. And with the way the ball was going through the pins, she's using the UC2. That ball is going to hook once it sees friction. So he did make a big move. She may just have to modify that just a little bit. Again, look good off her hand. And she'll hook at this pair. Don't see that one too often on the right side. Uh... No, that was definitely an odd leave. And it's funny because I have seen bowlers shoot at that with their spare ball also, you know, just kind of hitting the two pin. And and I would I would have shot at it like Gigi did. I would I would have hooked at it. Definitely with the sleeper behind there, I would have. This has been her good lane so far. Gonna have to figure out lane 24 and she finishes on that lane. Correct. Another great shot playing way deep around 25, getting it down to that. And I believe they have tracers here. I can't really see off of, um, off of the screen. I usually refer to them if I can see it, but honestly, I can't see either one. But it does look like she's getting it out to about 9, 10. How good is that? Seven for seven. Great shot by Liz. What I like about this match is right here, this is a teaching match. And what I mean by that is you have the, I'm not going to say old school. I'm going to see the more seasoned veteran with a more traditional game still making that ball work in 2021 and her style and her mental game. And then you have Gigi, who is the up and coming superstar with the more modern game, who is giving her a run for her money. So this is this is a pretty cool match right here. We saw her fall out of that one, but gets the hit eight in a row. The couple times she's gotten this ball right on the left lane. It's just tickled that head pin and just blows the rack. You know what they say? In the old days, they used to say, right ball, right part of the lane. Go with it. <laughs> Let's see if Gigi makes the uh, adjustment here. She went light, last shot. Best shot of the day there on lane 24. She's going to need them all at the current pace. Liz Johnson, even if she were to spare out, is in the 260s max score. Looks like she moved just a little, little bit to the right off of that last shot. Probably made just a little bit too big of a move. Also opened her angles a little more. That looked like it was actually a little bit smoother off the spot around that 10 area where she's been playing on the left lane. That was a great shot. Trouble in the ninth, and this looks like it will end Gigi's run in her first national PWBA Tour title. Two, four, ten. That one, she just seemed, right at the end, she didn't seem like she got around that one a little bit. She's very soft with her hand. She's not very grabby. Um, she looks like she's just so smooth when she just gets around it, and that one she just didn't quite catch. The other thing, Gigi looks very good with her approach. And I'm talking about just the, whoa, look at that. Great shot from point A to point B. And what I mean, look at this, changes balls, the ball is gonna hook to the left of that two pin and she slides it right over. I love it, never giving up. But one thing about Gigi is if you watch her bowl, let's say four years ago, 
she had a lot of upper body movement. And, and I thought that, that that created some inconsistency. She's very smooth, very solid now to the line, very little body movement. She's definitely going to be a champion soon. Liz Johnson looking for nine in a row. Semifinal match, Lincoln Open. Going to have a chance? Oh, we're in business. Oh, go ahead, Liz. Shoot another 300 on TV. Light hit coming in, tickling that head pin, blowing the five and the seven off the deck. Traditional Liz Johnson style. I don't know. She's got a lot of styles. Blowing the five, seven off, <laughs> popping out the ring 10, the seven pin. She's got it all going. Look, you don't win 10 majors. I not know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? The pins One. know. 100% 10th frame front nine Liz Johnson she's going to advance how about a little bit more there we go once again a reminder a $10,000 bonus courtesy of go bowling for a 300 in the step ladder finals and again I hope everyone who's watching it's Cha not changing of the guards, because obviously Liz is winning this match, but two different styles, which is one of the great things about bowling, and both very successful. So it doesn't matter how you throw the ball. Just make sure what you do, you do to the best of your ability, and you can repeat. Looking for 11. Come on, Liz. There we go, folks. Just another day at the office for Liz Johnson. <laughs> here is the GOAT, G-O-A-T, right here, and stepping into it. And I've been told John Lucido will honor the $300 Sun Valley Lanes. <laughs> I love it. Bonus as well. So, John Lucido, one of the best people. So a chance for history to become the first bowler. Four bowlers have done this in PWBA Tour history, a championship round appearance. Liz has done it once to become the first to do it twice. Going for 300. Oh, got it right. It's looking good. We got oh, it. Yeah. We got it, folks. Congratulations, Liz Johnson. That's moving on. And uh, we're going to get instant reaction here. This is uh, oh, yeah, this are. is unprecedented access here on Bull TV at the PWBA Lincoln Open. We got John Lacito as well. Let's uh, bring them both in. Liz, it's my pleasure on behalf of all of us here at Sun Valley Lanes. Three hundred dollars. Man, thank you. Congratulations. Great job, young lady. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Keep it up. Awesome. That's I great. love it. Hey, hi, Liz. Hi, Carolyn. Hey. You are no stranger to TV. You are no stranger to 300s yeah. as you shoot one against me. I love yeah. it. But I got to tell you really quickly yeah. before you get yeah. back out there. Yeah. Again, no stranger to that situation. Mm -hmm. What is going through your mind? Just just making the shots. I mean, I, I moved uh, the target a little bit uh, right to start for, for TV. And I just felt really comfortable. And I'm just you know working on my leverage and staying down and just making the shots. And everything's coming together. Well, you look fantastic out there. You go get them, Goat. Thanks, hey, Liz, Carol. Liz, real quick, just in case they didn't mention mm -hmm. it, uh, along with that $300, there's also a $10,000 bonus from Go Bowling. So congratulations. Holy cow. I know who's buying dinner next week. <laughs> That's fine. I'll do it. No McDonald's. <laughs> All right, Liz. Congratulations. We'll see you in the finals. McDonald's. Is she kidding? <laughs> After all the years, no way, man. That is steak dinner right there. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How unbelievable was that, folks? 300 in the semifinals of the PWBA Lincoln Open by Liz Johnson to defeat Gigi Mason, who bowled an excellent game, 232, to set up this matchup kelly kulik versus liz johnson we've done this before it is always fantastic and we're going to have this title coming up next here on bowl tv cdb so aaron come on 
we got to talk about it quickly. Hall of Famers. Just shot 300. One of the best ever, one of the best ever. I mean, can you write the story any better? Seriously. I mean, just look at these shots, right? And then you watch Kelly Bowl all week and she looks rock solid. I mean, again, we're talking about Gigi being the new game out here on tour and looking fantastic and putting in the work. She is smooth from point A to point B. She will be in the winner's circle. You have Shannon Pluhowski who works on her game and is in between both of the Kelly Kulik and Liz Johnson's and the Gigi. And now you have Kelly Kulik and Liz Johnson who it's no stranger that they are bowling each other and their games are as sharp now as they were in 2003. What is that saying about not only their talent commitment, but I mean, come on, can bowling get any better than that? Yeah, that is uh, all facts. Such a great matchup we have coming up. Uh, we do have Gigi Mason available after her third place finish here. Gigi, welcome to the show. Congratulations on uh, making your first championship round appearance. Uh, I bet you didn't expect to say that Liz Johnson was going to shoot 300 against you, but uh, tell us about the experience this week. Yeah, you know, it was really cool. Like the, the first round, I actually struggled a bunch, um, but figured some things out, was able to shoot a 300 to give me a lot of pins to get, you know, up there. Um, and I just really learned a lot out here. It was a lot. I had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, I didn't expect the 300, but I was rooting for it. So <laughs> she got the last one for sure. Gigi, you are the future of women's bowling. I made a comment. I watched you bowl years ago. I made uh, the, the assumption uh, you had a lot of body movement. I'm talking five or six years ago, a little bit of a lot of body movement there when you would throw the ball. You look so smooth and just so in tempo. You've really changed. Not a lot of uh, body movement. You're yeah. solid, solid at the line. What are some of the things you've been working on? Honestly, everything, <laughs> but really, but really just like my footwork, my swing path. And just like you said, just trying to get less body um, parts like moving just so it's like, uh, you know, a swing that's super loose and just allows me to be able to play different parts of the lane and definitely repeat shots. You had a little bit of a, a problem on that right lane. It seemed yeah. to hook up just a little soon. You made the move. And then by the third time you got back on that lane, you made a great shot. Uh, what were you seeing there on the right lane? Yeah, I was having a little bit of difficulty just shaping it when I thought it was okay and I missed in a little, like you said. So then I made the move and it was too far right. And then, you know, I made an, another adjustment, really just tried to slow my ball speed down so that I could actually get around the corner and make a move. And, you know, then I was able to get it, but it was too late. But now I know. <laughs> now you, and you will reflect back on that the next time you're on TV. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, what, I mean, you, you just, again, you are uh, a collegiate star, a Team USA. You are now paving the way for all of the young ladies out there. Give us one of the goals for Gigi Mason. Um, this year, definitely a goal is to, to win a title, you know. Um, so I've been putting in a lot of work and just to be able, you know, like to, to get here. And, you know, I don't want to stop here. I just want to keep, you know, just keep putting in the work and, and the results will happen. So. Okay, and I know I because I can talk forever, but one more, one more. Um, what is a piece of advice? Oh, to give all the young late give give the young ladies that are watching tonight a piece of advice. Yes, um, I actually heard this the other day, but don't you know ever think that you really failed? You know, whenever you don't do as well as you want to, it's actually a lesson. You only really fail if you quit. So no quitting. <gasps> just, just keep working, no matter what. I love it. That's why you are who you are. Oh, we're so lucky to have you. Excellent, excellent couple of days there, Gigi. I look forward to seeing you next week. Best of luck. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Gigi. Thanks. All right. Gigi Mason, third place finish here at the PWBA Lincoln Open. We had yes. a 300 final in the semi. 
Uh, quick stat, uh, mm-hmm. Liz Johnson has struck on 19 of 23 shots so far. Correct. Uh, <laughs> that so, was a tough one to figure out. <laughs> hey, the, the second game was very easy. I'm not going to lie. That was not <laughs> not my most uh, in-depth look to figure out how many strikes she had in game two, but has just missed four times so far. And one of those was on a ball change on the fill ball in game one. Uh, mm-hmm. So has been just on point. What? Uh, I, this is such a unique situation. Uh, obviously, this great matchup here, but, uh, you know, T- talk about you know Liz coming off the excitement of the 300. How much might that phase her, and how much might that help Kelly or hurt Kelly? Well, you know, I was just thinking about that because I said to myself, okay, so here you have Kelly Kulik, who's not afraid of, of pressure or getting on TV or leading an event, but your opponent just shot 300, and she shot 250 before that. I mean, she is lined up, and her carry is very good. Um But again, we've seen a lot of times where someone shoots 300 and then all of a sudden the tides turn. Unfortunately, I don't see that happening here, but I think it's going to be a good match. And a nine pin to kick things off. So Liz will not repeat the effort here in the title match, but uh, another great shot. Right. And, And one of the things that really keeps Liz zoned in is the fact of her game is so simple. She doesn't veer off the beaten path very often. She's going to either increase her ball speed, move her eyes a little right, but really all in all, she just keeps it very simple, point A to point B, right? Get it off my hand, get it going in the right direction, and I walk away. Our first look here at Kelly Kulik. We'll see if lane 24 gives her some of the same struggles that Gigi saw throughout the course of the semifinal match. Kelly did have a choice of starting lane, finishing lane. Who started the match? And a trip two for the Hall of Famer. Kelly getting the early break with the trip two pin, playing the lanes differently than Liz, more like Gigi. Gets it just a little bit too far right, but gets a trip two pin. So she needs to just build on that. And I feel those have been the, and Kelly has been in so many championship round appearances since the relaunch of the tour. And it feels those are the hits she never gets. So potentially a good sign to kick things off here in the title match of the Lincoln Open. Looking to capitalize, make it two for two. Definitely looked like she got that one further left. You could see when she let it go. I I am going to say by looking at, we had Shannon, who was on her side of the lane. So obviously she could play the lanes the way she wanted to. Liz has had the best look. Why? Because the look really has not changed. Gigi struggled a little bit on the right lane. Kelly got this one in a little bit. She'll have to make the move on both lanes because of the trip too. And Kelly is quick with moves. So it'll be interesting to see what she decides to do. Folks, as we get underway here in this title match, we still have one more bowling ball giveaway, a storm bowling ball of your choice to one lucky Bowl TV viewer. Congratulations to Stephanie for winning the Roto Grip bowling ball uh, at the beginning of the semifinal. We're going to start this after Liz's shot here in the second frame. All you have to do is click the submit entry button and be sure to be out of the full screen mode once you see it pop up on your screen. Second frame, title match. And again, I I state this, and I'm repeating here a little bit. Does that shot really look any different than the last two games? If anything, she now has that little bit of area to the right because she was going a lot straighter up that 10-11. Now she's able to bump it about that 8-9, and that ball's just rolling nice and smooth off of the pattern. And the carry is just phenomenal. And let me tell you, Kelly knows how to play straight. So if Kelly wanted to, she doesn't like her look on the, you know, hooking it. She can definitely move to the right. The light mixer for the double. Do you think there was a slight adjustment there after the nine pin in the first? 
Um, I think so. And and like she said, when she started the match, the first match, Liz says she moved her eyes a little further right. But again, she uses her ball speed to her, to her advantage. And it's such an asset in her game that it's allowed her to have hold and now a little bit of hook. Yes, I think she probably moved the board left. I want to see what Kelly does here on this right lane. Fantastic. Great shot. She caught that one, did not get it as far right down lane. This ball only gets to about 10. Perfect. Boy, that ball went straight back. That was a great shot. Did not slide past the break point there like we saw in the first. Caught the hit with the trip two. That one was as good as it gets. Congratulations to Diane winning the Storm Bowling Ball as our final giveaway. Big thank you once again to Storm, Roto Grip, and Brunswick Gold Partners here on the PWBA Tour, hooking fans up here on Bowl TV. Very aggressive shot by Kelly. Right here. Again, does not get the ball as far right as she did. She missed left the last time on this lane, so I apologize on that. But she looks so aggressive. And one of the things that I spoke about last week is Kelly really is working on making sure that that swing is smooth. She's pushing it. Her thought is with her elbows, not her shoulders. And she's able to loft the ball out onto the lane just a little bit more, which she feels has increased her carry. Another trip four. We had one on the left lane last game, now on the right lane. Got that one just a little bit further left. It's starting to hook up just a little bit. When she, when she missed left on the left lane, she also tripped a four pin. So again, as we saw that move, and I think it's a simple move with Liz. Again, a one and one, you know, even maybe just her feet because she – she really does always keep the ball in front of her. So it's just so good. Fifth frame looking to make it four in a row. Light mixer last time up on this lane. Connects. What a match we got here, CDB. Boy, I'll tell you, right here again, gets it to about eight, nine, but straight up the lane. Boy, with that stone, um, she had the stone nine, right? Stone nine in the first. Stone nine. Oh, my God, she'd have another 300 going. Do you get paid twice? <laughs> I would say yes. And, and technically, we're still waiting for our checks from the semifinal as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelly, to uh, keep pace, stay down by 10. Her fifth frame. Good shot. I said that good shot, really low on that one. Good shot, doesn't matter. Right here, nice and smooth, gets the ball out on the lane. Didn't quite catch that one. You could see it gets down the lane just a little bit longer. One of the things she mentioned uh, when I was talking to her during the couple of days, uh, you know, she didn't want to over hit it. So, she didn't want to get grabby. That was one of the things she has really worked on is the fact of making sure she, the tempo and the ball getting into the swing allows it to drop naturally so she can get it out on the lane without grabbing it, doing it with a little less feel. And right there, that's one of those shots where she just didn't get around it, but she got a great reaction. We saw the trip four from Liz. Kelly unable to get it there in the sixth. Great shot. Got it a little in, but still, you could see. She got that one, lofted it out on the lane. She caught it, and, and that's common. You know, you, you kind of blow the rack on the right lane there, miss hit it just a little bit. So, of course, the common thought is, okay, just make sure to catch it. Um, but she got a break. She only left the four pin. And you are watching two of the best spare shooters ever uh, right now compete. So standard spare.
We watched the fifth perfect game in championship round appearance history in the semifinal from Liz Johnson. Spare in the first four in a row, looking to make it five here. Sixth frame title match against Kelly Kulik for the Lincoln Open. Two pin in the sixth. Definitely got that ball to the right. It didn't didn't look as if Liz actually completed the shot. She definitely didn't roll through that one the way she had been. So just a bad shot. And like you said, two pin. No problem on the spare. Ten pin match as we head into the seventh. Using her special spare ball for striking out breast cancer. The Lucy Bonneau mixed doubles that the PWBA bowls. It's very cool. We've seen a couple of those out there this week mm -hmm. and uh, even on uh, some of the PBA shows as well. Yes. Uh, seeing those out there. So very awesome stuff. Much better shot by Liz Johnson right here. Much more aggressive. That ball was way in front of her. And like you mentioned, Aaron, it she may be seeing just a little bit of the ball, you know, hooking up just a little early. But again, her moves aren't going to be big. That subtle one and one, two and one, and increasing her ball speed. Kelly looking to match in the seventh and nine pin. Goodness. Great shot by Kelly. Right here, gets the ball out on the lane, and you could see her hand get right around it. Great shot. Leaves the stone nine. And, Aaron, you mentioned it earlier. Those are the shots right there. If you go back and watch some of Kelly's championship rounds, this happens to her. Mm -hmm. It does. And I'm not making an excuse by all means, but it just seems that it happens at the most inopportune times. Covers the spare. Four pin, nine pin, her last two shots out here in the title match. Max score, 248 still out there. What a title tilt here on Bowl TV, folks, for the PWBA Lincoln Open. Fifth title of the 2021 season up for grabs here. Kulik Johnson going to come down to the final frame. And, oh, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Wow. Well, it, there, there really is nothing to say about that. It just, as you can see by her face, ball didn't quite come around the corner, but did not look like a bad shot. Just a bad break. It's going to drop her max down to 224. Liz Johnson currently pacing at a 229 clip. If she's able to stay clean here, not give up too much count, which uh, she has done through the first three games. It helps when one game you just strike on every shot, but has uh, not had an open yet. No, and, and she left a two pin, I believe, on the lane, on her last shot on this lane, correct? Correct. The first ring tent we have seen today from her. But you take that all day right now. Take that to the bank. Just 
just kept that one in front of her, played it like she has been. And you're right, the ring 10, I mean, they didn't have a chance on stand in the last couple of games. So, again, Lane could be going through some transition, which it does. But as you mentioned, it's basically keeping that ball in play. which will force Kelly to basically strike out to keep Liz uh, marking. It's again, 224 out there for Kulik after the devastating 7-10 in frame number eight. She had left a four pin the previous time on that lane. She does have to finish on lane 23. Great setup shot by Liz. And you know, it's funny. If I were to ask Liz right now, hey, which lane would you want to finish on? Which one do you think she'd pick? I mean, they all they both look good. They've both been great so far today. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't think it really mattered. I think it was more of Kelly's option as to which lane she liked because of what she was seeing with Gigi's reaction. And of course, as we know, Gigi's reaction was better on the left lane. So I think that played into Kelly's choice of finishing on the left lane. Strike in the ninth, 224 still out there. It's going to need the double stepping up here in the 10th to put any pressure on Liz to fill that frame for her 25th career title great shot by kelly you can't ever count kelly out she will give it her all again you're you're watching two people who've been in the championship match a lot <laughs> and it's amazing and and kelly is using two different balls an iq nano pearl and a rubicon uc2 so again that plays into that talent of being able to make those adjustments. Gets the hit to kick off the 10th, 224 still out there. She gave that a second look, 10 pin dare stand. <laughs> I like how she's not getting the ball as far to the right. It almost, even though she's playing in, you can see that angle is not opened up too much. It's more of that smoother look off the pattern, and I think that's increased her carry. A mark and six. Taking her time. This is what Liz would need if Kelly strikes out. Strike the easiest way to get it. Great shot. Oh, just a little, I mean, just a little hard. I mean, but off her hand, that looked good. Same angle, but look, it, it gets down the lane just a pinch further. Leaves the seven pin, does not get the break. Kelly's going to finish with a 213. Eight pins here in two shots for Liz Johnson. Will allow her to collect her 25th career PWBA Tour title, first since 2018 at the Columbus Open. Her birthday's tomorrow. Will the celebration start early right here for the win? Congratulations, Liz Johnson, taking home the 2021 PWBA Lincoln Open. That's just craziness. Just unbelievable. Just, my God, what do you say?
that's just, that's GOAT. It's perfection. Both ladies, Hall of Famers, and you could see that by the pressure they put on each other back and forth. But Liz, unstoppable tonight. A phenomenal tournament for Kelly Kulik. Out averaged the field by six pins. Her second consecutive championship round appearance, a third and a second so far this year on tour for Kelly. Oh, that elusive win. Just looking for a first since 2017. It's going to have to wait another week. 238, 213. Liz Johnson, your champion. Can hear her say it. That's number 25. We'll have a chance to talk with Kelly Kulik first here, bringing her into the show. Kelly, excellent week. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you were seeing out there in the title match. <laughs> I ran into a train, basically. <laughs> uh, you know, watching Liz off from the side and just having a good look as she did, I really thought that in our practice we would have burned a spot up and she might have had a little mm -hmm. wiggle. Not to change her look, just to make ours better. And uh, it just the way they played today on the show and the way they played the last round, the ladies that hooked it got four so far left and our carry percentage goes down, unfortunately. I, I really, that 7-10 split, I, I nailed that one. I was really disappointed because I really thought I threw it great and didn't deserve that. So frustrating. Yeah, I, I, I can see why you're frustrated. That right lane seemed to be the lane that gave the people, well, gave you and Gigi, uh, gave you the a little bit of that trouble, like you said, of getting yeah. it around the corner. But you came back on the right lane and made a great shot. The 710, I made that comment. I, I thought it was a great shot. It might have gotten down the lane. I mean, just a pinch longer, but by all means, uh, thought it would blow the rack. Yeah. And uh, what forced you, though, to use two different balls? Was it basically that that front and that middle part of the lane on, on that right lane? Exactly, Carolyn. You know, the, the back end on the right lane, even through match, well, somewhat match play, we cross it, it, it wiggled down back. So my my feeling was go to symmetry, go to something symmetric. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't burn and it would try to store some energy to kick in the back. And yet I can still keep it in front of me. So I didn't have to give the pocket away. And and that nine pin, you know, I, I got it in a touch. I'm not going to lie, but you're, you're bowling on such a demanding condition. You're not going to mm -hmm. execute and be perfect every shot. So yeah, some, she caught, she didn't get any good breaks. She bowled phenomenal. Um, I wish I could have caught a few more myself, to be honest. Right. But you had, when you and I were talking though, we talked a little bit about um, what the changes you've made in your game, which I love, and I, I keep repeating this because I'm telling you, I love the the thought of pushing with the elbows. Mm -hmm. it, and I, I, I'm quoting you correctly, I believe yes. on that. Pushing with a little more with the elbows where those shoulders don't get forward and everything just drops and is smooth and allows you to get the ball onto the lane without the grab. Mm -hmm. How is that feeling? I mean, it lo it looks great to me. But on the one shot that it looked like you may not have quite caught it, is that something that, you know, still peaks its, its head every now and then? Or yeah. what is your key? Yeah, you know, every every pressure situation, there was going to be a little bit grab and so forth. And, mm -hmm. and my hands, my, my heart rate, you know, if I was tested for COVID right now, my temperature body feels like it's 102, but my hands feel like 75. Right. So I'm fighting with that a little bit. That's what you have to do when you're, you have that weight period to get mm -hmm. on the pair. Uh, yeah, Carolyn, that's exactly it. You know, just trying to transition that that shape and the elbows of the ball into the swing. It makes my feet go faster. My flat spot, or I call it the window opportunity, is mm -hmm. much longer. And like you said, there's just more newfound energy off my hand in the ball. I'm still have to tweak the thumb a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to go home and practice and, and make one little small tweak to see if I can set it to clear it a little bit cleaner. Um, okay. You know, the old Kelly shows up where I get a little bit slower then my swing gets steep and that's where I miss hit it at the bottom. If I, if I chase it with my legs, then everything is just through the shot. There's more energy and it's onto the lane rather than into the lane. Well, I, I love, I think the carry is different. I, and yeah. I've noticed that even watching you during the two days of qualifying and match play, or I say match play, sorry, just the qualifying, um, I I like the getting it out on the lane. I think your ball conserves more energy and you can see the increased carry, even where you're placing yeah. to, to make the show. But you also talked to me a little bit about uh, uh, your, your mental game. And 2019, uh, 
lot going on. You were being pulled in a lot of directions and you were going to take a break. Mm -hmm. What is something you really keyed on with that mental focus to get you more prepared and, and that newfound energy to enter 2021? You know, the 2019 bowling became a job. I really didn't want to go to it. I didn't want to, I wasn't performing and it was something that I just had to show up and do. And after having the break in 2020, you know, the teaching, the exercise classes, the line dancing um, workshops and everything, it just kind of fulfilled me better spiritually and as a whole person. And then, you know, when you're doing what you love, it just transposes into everything else you're doing and carries into it. So I did, I've been practicing since January. I worked with Cecil on my grip. And, and like I said, I, I want to be a contender out here. I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of playing second fiddle. I thought today was going to be the day I break through again. And uh, like I said, I ran into a train and, and, and Liz being a hall of famer too. Um, it's just, I don't, I, I'm going to be back here again. I can guarantee it. I'm going to be back here and I'm going to be in the winter circle this year. I know it. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I'm going to go out on a limb. And so you're going to be there more than once for crying out loud. And you'll be carrying a trophy more than once. But that was a fantastic match between two of the greats of our sport, uh, the camaraderie, first of all. Uh, I love, love the difference in the style of the games. We talked about that, where both of you are still uh, veterans, seasoned veterans, but the difference in styles where you're still getting the job done and we're looking at Gigi as the up and coming style and, and the future of women's bowling. But you will definitely be in the winner's circle. Kelly, you look great out there. And I look forward to seeing you at the Queens. Yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I, I look forward to our time in Reno together. You bet. Thanks, Kelly. Take care. All right, we're going to have uh, Liz Johnson joining us here in just a second. Uh, let's recognize our other finishers this week. Mm -hmm. uh, going to look at uh, fifth place, Stephanie Johnson, just 20 pins out of the show. Julia Bond, sixth place, Clara Guerrero, Diana Zavialova, Liz Culkin, Shannon O'Keefe, another top 10 finish for her. Dasha Kovalova, last week's champion in 11th, and then Verdi Crawley uh, earning mm -hmm. that last spot, uh, finishing in 12th place overall. Uh, you know, I... Carolyn, I love the fact that you mentioned, uh, A, I loved hearing it from Kelly, and B, I loved hearing you mention it uh, about seeing her progress uh, just in these two events, uh, third place, the second place. She only has one mm -hmm. more spot to go before uh, we get used to, or we get back to seeing Kelly Kulik raising the title. Oh, absolutely. You know, I talked to Chris Barnes about this the other day when we were on our, our podcast. When you keep knock, knock, knocking on the door, the door eventually opens and she's been in the winner's circle. She just hasn't won as much as she wants to. And she hasn't won the key events where she felt like this was my week, kind of like tonight. And you can't, you, you, you can't change that somebody just shot 300 and 250 and is lined in and you're bowling against someone who makes very few mistakes. So it isn't about her performance. It really was about this wasn't meant to be her night, but she will be back there again because, again, she is going in the right direction. She feels good about herself inside and out, and that's the, that's the best you can do. I mean, the confidence level is high. And the other part of that is you mentioned all these people in the top 12, and we've talked about this on the show. Look at the different styles. Look at the younger generation, the power players, yet you have – Julia Bond, who likes to play straighter and is more traditional. You have Stephanie Johnson, who likes to play straighter, more traditional, uses her ball speed to her advantage. Right here, it's showing you how, how diversified women's bowling is and that anyone, anyone with the will and the desire and a good work ethic can, can compete out there. All right, CDB, let's welcome in our champion. Uh, happy to say her. Fresh off her 25th career title, a 300 game in the semifinals. She just shot 783 out there, folks. Liz Johnson, congratulations, Liz. What an amazing, amazing performance out there. Thank you so much. It's uh, I still can't believe that. Still can't believe it. I was happy to make the show here. So, <laughs> you, you know what? I can't believe it either. I mean, eh, Liz, I can't believe it. Can you believe it, Aaron? I'm nope. shocked. Yeah. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> I mean, Liz... You yeah. were on fire from game one. Yeah. You had the best look on the lane. Yeah. Yeah. And and I've, I've mentioned this numerous times, and I, I'd love to talk about it. 
I believe over the years, obviously I've watched you bowl. Um, you have truly used your ball speed to your advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, even though the lanes transition, mm -hmm. you either start in a place where you know those moves are going to be the two and mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. two and two, yep. parallel, or you're going to increase your ball speed. Right. What was the key tonight to keeping that great reaction? Um, just really having good leverage, uh, having good leverage and uh, having my elbow in and talking with the ball reps and just, you know, every time if I got my, my elbow out, it was my angles were going actually a little wide um, and just having good leverage. That was actually every time uh, when I got up to the line, I'm like, I just said to myself, leverage, leverage, leverage. And uh, that was a key. And just, uh, you know, my push away and th just the, the early steps of uh, my approach were the key to uh, at the end of the follow line. So you, you've mentioned that too. And that was something else you, you texted me was uh, your tempo, mm -hmm. keeping everything, everything yeah. where that tempo uh, yeah. will, would allow you yeah. to keep your lines right. more in front of you. Right. And I, and I felt that was key on that pattern because it didn't seem like you fought ball reaction mm -hmm. at all. It, it pretty much well stayed the same. Not, not in the finals, but uh, this morning <laughs> they this morning they were a little they're a little more brutal. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was uh, you know kind of fishing around a little bit, and when I get uncomfortable, and that's that's where uh, my push away and everything gets kind of out of whack. And when I was talking to uh, Jim Callahan, I'm like, you know, as soon as my my push away gets a little more rounded and a little quicker, um, then everything falls into place. I'm not just kind of uh, where my, I just start popping up. Cause when I get uncomfortable, I pop up and, and want to over muscle it. And, mm -hmm. uh, I was able to use the same ball pretty much most of the, the weekend and, uh, just different angles. Like, uh, this uh, yesterday I used probably like a little, little left of where I was playing, like around 10, 12, and then gradually moved in. And then today, uh, this morning, I, I probably play a little bit, probably like 15, but just kind of rolling it a little bit more for me. And, uh, and then, for the finals, it just, we tried something out, you know, I tried a couple different balls and it just worked and it just, uh, you know, up just straight up the back of it. I had hold, I had a little bit of hook and everything fell into place and, and I started getting comfortable. And actually the more comfortable I get, probably the harder I start throwing it. And, uh, um, probably, and again, that's probably when I start the advantage I feel like I've always had against maybe some of the other girls is my ball speed. And if I mm -hmm. have to, if I have to, uh, especially with, with so much friction here and mm -hmm. instead of making a ball change, you just got to kind of get it over the uh, thrown part of the lane. And that's pretty much where my keys, but staying I, down at the same time. <laughs> I, I think one of your assets has always been your ball speed. You, you, you've used it to your advantage at the right times. Mm -hmm. And, and honestly, even when you're still throwing it hard and mm -hmm. you feel like, you maybe need a little more roll. Mm -hmm. You may change balls with mm -hmm. more surface, still mm -hmm. be able to play your A game. You've yep. been very smart and very meticulous about that, which is why you have 25 titles. So you. you, we talked and you said, mm -hmm. Carolyn, I want to win number 25 by the end of the year. Well, yep. you've already gotten it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, so you mm -hmm. have, and I got my sheet here because I have to look 10 majors, mm -hmm. 25 titles now. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are we looking at in 2021 of Liz Johnson here? Um, I want to, I want to just keep winning. I want to, I want to, who knows, who knows what I can do. Um, I feel um, as confident uh, this week as I ever have, or as I have in a very long time. And uh, you know, I, I don't want to stop at, you know, just at 25 and in this win in Lincoln, I want to, I want to keep going and I know I can do it. Well, I, I, you're the epitome of, of, I mean, my God, we called you. You're the goat. Uh, I love the fact, and I, I've said this before, we have all different styles now out on the tour. You have shown everybody out there that a traditional style of making sure I do what I do best mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. takes you to the winner's circle. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, I, I'm in awe of it every time you bowl, uh, same as all these girls out here. But uh, true mm -hmm inspiration to watch you. and you are a great ambassador for our sport uh liz i'm going to ask you one more question before i turn it over to aaron mm -hmm. because i said that we're talking about all these different styles on tour now and mm -hmm. how the game's changing mm -hmm. a piece of advice for the young ladies that are watching from you one of the greatest of all time um, just keep working at everything, everything you possibly imagine. You know, I see one thing I do see a lot of the girls do is uh, spares. Uh, 
Um, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that probably one of the things just getting me to the finals is I missed, and I, I hate even missing any, I missed one single, I missed one single pin spare over the, the 24 games. And, uh, to me, that's not, a, you know, that's too much. So I, I pride myself on my spare game always have. And, uh, you know, if you can play out, I mean, obviously I don't always play all parts of the lane, but, uh, yeah, just a lot of practice and, um, spares so always do the spares and the, and, the, and the mental game is, you know, that's 80 to 90%. So try not to get too mad out there. <laughs> exactly. Well, great bowling. I mean, that just was phenomenal. I loved watching it and, uh, congratulations, Liz. And I look Thank forward you. to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. Thank Liz, you. Liz, congratulations. Just uh, so fun to watch. So amazing as always. Uh, enjoy the moment and happy early birthday. Thank yes, you so much. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Liz. We appreciate it. And we'll uh, see you in Cleveland soon. All right. Yep. I'll be there. I'll be there Thursday. All right, CDB. That was a show. My goodness. Just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, 783 out there for her three games mm -hmm. in her three wins. A 300, the fifth all time on a televised final. Uh, just everything. A, an epic matchup against Kelly Kulik. Uh, I've it doesn't get much better than that on the PWBA tour. No, we we knew it was going to be a great telecast. We talked about the 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 assets that all of them brought to this show. Uh, but you knew that if Kelly and Liz met in that championship match, it was going to be epic because you're you're two Hall of Famers, two people that have changed the sport for for women's bowling. And they they did not prove us wrong, which is fantastic. And then again, I keep bringing this up. You have Gigi, who's the up and coming star who just was rooting for Liz Johnson to shoot 300. And then, of course, you have Shannon Pluhowski who's right in the middle, right in the middle of the newcomer and the the seasoned veterans, as I like to say, and still is working on her game and passing all of her knowledge on to collegiate bowlers and bringing it onto the lanes for herself. So, I mean, this this was a fantastic show. And folks, we uh, we are so thankful you were able to join us here on Bowl TV for this. Of course, the PWBA Greater Cleveland Open coming up next week, uh, starting Thursday with the practice session and the podcast, and then competition kicking off Friday. Uh, the intercollegiate singles and team championships. We were talking about college bowling. Uh, the national finals coming up this week as well from Grand Rapids will be there as well. So plenty of action coming up on Bowl TV. But uh, you know, just a big thank you, of course, to the United States Bowling Congress uh, and the USBC Board of Directors, BPAA and their board of directors, uh, Kegel, the official lane maintenance provider of the PWBA tour, all the PWBA members uh, for providing us such an amazing, amazing show this week. Of course, our uh, host proprietor this week, John Lucido and Sun Valley Lanes, the entire staff, a big thanks to them. Uh, the Bull TV community, we can't do it without you. Uh, I hope you had some fun watching that. We sure did. Uh, and just a big thank you for always supporting not only Bull TV, but the PWBA Tour as well. Uh, so from all of us here at Bull TV, uh, we got Jason Thomas and Mike Flanagan behind the scenes. CDB, the Hall of Famer, joining us here on the call for the finals. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Aaron Smith. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Be sure to check out the recap on PWBA.com coming up in a little bit. And remember, on Bull TV, Bowling lives here. Everybody, have a great night.